it's difficult for me to comprehend that the CCA has been in operation for 20 years. Um, it seems simultaneously like yesterday um, that I worked uh, on the building. I remember uh, a any number of steps in the process, but it also seems a lifetime ago uh, the world was so different then. Um, things are so different now. To put this, uh, the extraordinary achievement of the CCA in some context, I thought that I might say a few words about what things were like um, before the CCA existed and a bit about the process of designing and building it, um, working with Phyllis. Um, I should also mention that though the building opened in 1989, 20 years ago this coming May, Phyllis asked me if I would uh, work on it with her in the early fall of 1983, and she had clearly been thinking about something like the CCA for many, many years before that. So for me, this is the 25th anniversary of my starting to work on this project. And for Phyllis, it is the many, many more than 20 year anniversary of the beginning of the CCA as an idea. What were things like in 1983 when we began uh, our collaboration? It was a time in Quebec that seemed to me very strangely and eerily similar to the, to the times in which we live today. At least from my perspective, um, uh, a Canadian living in this country to the south, the United States. Um, in that, uh, I remember thinking that the times then were in economic terms dire. None of us seemed to have work. Um, uh, we were worried about everything in, that related to, uh, to the to economy. Uh, it was a highly politicized time, but it was also a time of great hope and great optimism for the future. As in many cities, Montreal had seen a great number of buildings and neighborhoods destroyed. The site on which the CCA sits um, was mostly vacant, except for the vandalized, derelict, but landmarked house the Shaughnessy House at its center. The site looked and felt like a giant hole in the fabric of this quartier, the highway and its four on and off ramps having been installed with little attention paid to the consequences for the neighborhood. So in an important way, the CCA began as an act of conservation, uh, an act of will on Phyllis's part at the beginning in the purchase of the property to stem the tide of loss of significant pieces of the city and an anticipation of, at that time, unknown better futures ahead. In the beginning of the making of the CCA, in light of the, this particular set of conditions, Phyllis and I talked also about the CCA being, among many other things, an urban repair. When we began the CCA, we were, uh, I, I remember being asked uh, in, uh, endless numbers of questions, but the most common one was, what is the Canadian Centre for Architecture? Um, and I remember giving many answers, usually not with much effect, people's eyes would glaze over, but the, the, the best one was that it was some kind of an architectural museum. And then people would ask, what's an architectural museum? And the conversation would taper off. Um, <laughs> But the, the fact is that the CCA was the invention of a new in institutional type. There were libraries, for sure, I, Avery and RIBA among them, two great ones. There were co various collections of drawings. There were collections of photographs, uh, spaces for exhibition, mostly in architecture schools, um, but, and places of research, for sure. But there was no one place where you could uh, gather these activities and facilities uh, in one institution, strangely because it seems now so important, but there were none. So in essence, we were in uncharted territory um, and uh, that was very exciting um, and a very um, uh, made things at, at, from time to time quite difficult. And, and things were constantly changing. For one thing, the program was constantly changing. Uh, when we began the project in 1983, the CCA, if I recall correctly, had a staff of 
about 30 or 35 people. When the building opened in, in 1989, the staff was about 120. We were designing and building during that period. Uh, and as these changes came, we hoped that our uh, thinking was up to, uh, was able to anticipate these things. Um, what was it like working with Phyllis? It was certainly demanding. Um, it was exciting, sometimes nervous making, always fascinating. Um, I remember one, one anecdote I thought that I would, I would pass on. Um, uh, we'd done the building but not yet thought about the furniture, began designing furniture, and one of the m fundamental pieces of this place um, was the Ah, uh, there's a slide coming that will be perfectly timed. Uh, was was the making of tables. Um, uh, I was a young architect. Furniture was over the, had been over the horizon, though I'd thought about it, looked at furniture a lot, um, and with great uh, a lot of effort, energy, um, research, thinking, I designed a table and built this. In, well, I some people in my office built this fabulous model and I carried it into Phyllis's office. Um, we, uh, we, I, I should say we met every week, at least sometimes more than once a, once a week, in my office, in Phyllis's office, on the site. Um, and in one of these meetings, I brought the model of this table I'd worried so much about, and worked so hard on, put it on a table in Phyllis's office and waited for a moment. And Phyllis uncharacteristically said nothing for a while and then she said, um, tell me, Peter, uh, what do you think this table does uh, for the advancement of the art of table design? <laughs> I picked my table up, and I walked out, and I <laughs> came back a few weeks later. And but thus began one of many, many discussions about either using things if they were out there and available and worked well or advancing the state of the art. Um, a few of the things that I think we achieved at, at the CCA, um, we did make, I think, a significant and strategic urban repair that we visually and psychologically repositioned this quartier and the highway and consolidated a critical edge of a previously badly damaged quartier. We created a a stable environment for a very valuable but very fragile uh, set of collections of works on paper um, and spaces to exhibit them in uh, that had daylight, which had not been done before, g galleries for works on paper, which are so susceptible to the uh, negative uh, aspects of daylight. Th those galleries had all been um, in the artificially light completely. Uh, but these were the only galleries the CCA was to have, so that we made them, uh, we figured out a way to bring daylight in for the human spirit without it having a negative effect on the works. A, an achievement that took a, a, a significant amount of effort. Um, we used limestone for the first time in decades um, and uh, rescued, I think, an important material, one of the es essential materials that defines this city. Um, and we created an institution that was very much about the architecture uh, defined broadly and connected to the world beyond, but also an institution that was that affirmed its sense of place in this in this milieu. Uh, it was deeply removed, uh, deeply rooted in and committed to this place, uh, a place I should say that felt very fragile back then. And in this regard, we used to say that it, it began and was about native species, um, starting with Phyllis and me. Other native species being limestone, maple, granite, aluminum, so on.